Hello and welcome to Byway Jam. We have decided to embark on a one-year road trip across South America. Leaving behind our jobs and apartment, we wanted to break free from routine and explore the world around us. With nothing but our beloved four-wheel drive, our goal is to discover the hidden gems of South America. We will be taking with us every step of the way, sharing our ups and downs, our discoveries and challenges. So buckle up and get ready to join us on our journey. After months of preparation, we were finally ready to hit the road. Our first destination would be the Pantanal, the largest tropical wetland in the whole world. Although it covers an area the size of Florida, the Pantanal is probably one of the less known natural treasures of South America. We left Sao Paulo and drove 1800 kilometers to reach a little town called Pocone, the northern entry of the Pantanal. It took us four days to get there. During that time, we finally had the opportunity to try out our tent, which would basically be our house for the next year. Then we finally arrived at our destination. Before going into more remote areas of the Pantanal, we decided to take a little break from driving. For the next few days, we set up camp on a beautiful farm surrounded by wetland, a landscape which is typical of the Pantanal. After this urgently needed break, it was time for us to continue our adventure and explore more of this fascinating landscape. Since most of the area is covered by water at least some time of the year, there are not many ways to get access to its wilderness. One of the few entries is the Trans Pantanera, a 150km dirt road leading right into the heart of the northern Pantanal. The Transpantanera goes directly through the floodplains and has a total of 122 bridges. The road is difficult, but it comes with astonishing views on both sides. If you're lucky, you get to see some wildlife. As we were going deeper into the Pantanal, we were looking out for signs of damage, since in 2020 a catastrophe had devastated the area. Oh, 
severa no, do Pantanal, o cenário é de Com desolação. Tanta destruição. Vegetação consumida Cada pelo fogo que, é que, é que, é que, é que tem áreas de cerrado e Pantanal, o fogo destruiu em poucos minutos o acesso ao cartão postal da cidade, uma lagoa cristalina. The fires destroyed around 20% of the whole Pantanal, a region larger than Belgium. But, as we were driving, we couldn't see any obvious destruction. We were actually more focused on safely crossing all bridges. The Transpantaneira ends in a little town called Porto Jofre, which is located at the São Lourenço River. The town is not much more than a few houses and a big hotel with an airport. But it has a campground, and that's where we stayed for the next few days. There we met a group of Brazilians who had come to the Pantanal for more than 30 years to go fishing. One day, one of them took us for a boat ride. The next days, we explored the town and its surroundings by foot. There, we got to see some questionable effects of human presence in the Pantanal. We were truly amazed by how much trash we saw during that part of our trip. On the other hand, we were still astonished by the beauty around us. While walking on an abandoned path, we found clear traces of one of the most majestic creatures that lives in the Pantanal, the South American Jaguar. It would be a very special moment for us to encounter this beautiful animal. So, we decided to move our car nearby and set up camp for the night. When the night set in, the sound of nature got louder and suddenly we were not quite sure anymore if we actually wanted to see the Jaguar pass by. However, in the early hours of the next day, we woke up from a frightening and extremely loud roar. Although we couldn't see it, we were sure that the Jaguar was nearby. Driven by sudden fear, we quickly packed up and drove away. Since we were already on the road, we decided to end our Pantanao adventure 
and drive back to civilization.